colleagues. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm going to talk a presentation on the Apple design title that Concept presented. Yeah, we'd like to thank you all for giving us this opportunity. We honestly can't be more grateful for it. Uh, so thank you for coming and well, be prepared, I guess. Yeah. I'd like to pol apologise about the way we're dressed. Uh, we are <laughs> off to our Duke Federal Gold expedition straight after this. Right, uh, we'll get started then. So, there we go. So I'd like to introduce ourselves first. So my name is Sheldon Paulson. At White Six Four College, I study A-level law, geography and business with, alongside an EPQ and as I said, Duke Federal Gold. Um, my process in like my plan of this was uh, planning, organisation and like marketing, so making the posters, making the presentation, letting all of this out to people around the college and getting like, feedback forums. And my name is Declan. At WIC I study A-level geography, criminology and psychology alongside my Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award. And in my role in Concerts Preserve, I was mainly in charge of the UX and UI design. So making sure it works well, making sure it looks well, and making sure everyone can use it. So actually is Concerts Preserve. So here's our like, home screen. It's mainly an app where you can share about what you've done to live a greener life. This gives other, other ideas to people that and what they could do. But this isn't the only feature that we offer. Concerts Preserve offers our users to track their carbon emissions by logging it on the app. So if you go for a walk, obviously that's better than going in your car, but you could track if you went for that walk and it'd tell you how much carbon you saved approximately based on what you've been putting into the app. As well as this, the app promotes sustainable businesses in your area. This ranges from food to fashion. So for example, in the um, white postcode area, the, the recommendations would be for stores such as the vintage store. And what's more inspiring than rewards, you know? Uh, if you use an app, you want to be rewarded for, you know, cutting your time and effort into the app. And that was what brought us to introduce achievements to our app. So if you save, for example, 10%, 25% of your carbon per week, you'll get a little achievement, which you can share on any other social media. So these are the actual features that our app offers. So first of all, this helps, the news section helps our users keep updated with environment re um, related news stories, such as um, what's going on with like COP26 and all these sort of related news stories. Concept? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Concept <laughs> preserve as stated before it allows our users to monitor the pollution. So you can see what your main outputs are and what your, you know, ones which you are using much. So, you know, if you go for a food shop at a farmer's market all the time, obviously that's going to be much lower down than if you go drive to work every single morning. As well as this, like I said before, access to sustainable fashion. Yeah. <laughs> and then the donations page as well enables people to donate to charities like Team Trains, Team Seas, amongst a lot of other charities and organisations, as well as donations to the app once it is up and running to help keep it up and running. So, we encourage our users to look at their energy tariff regularly as well, because in the cost of living crisis at the minute, with all our national gas being you know, really high in price, we encourage users to look at that and say, how can we make this cheaper by using a green tariff, for example? Move biofuel, wind, tidal, solar. And that's why we use our app to encourage users to look at that. There it is. So, with, so the food, food and drink part, like I said, when it relates to sustainable fashion, also gives out food brands and drink brands like Sustainable Coffee, which is you can kind of see over here on the homepage. Um, one of our users, Stevie, thank you, of course, goes to um, Mountain Bed for his own environmentally friendly coffee. Also promotes other food and drink um, businesses which are sustainable. We also give our users daily tips and tricks personalised to them on how they can lower that carbon emission. You know, as I said before, if you, if you go to Asda every single day, the food miles on something in Asda is so much higher than if you just go to your farmer's market. And that's why we encourage our users to look at their tips and tricks to find out how they, personalised to them, can get a lower carbon footprint. So what actually inspired us? Chat feature here as well. I'm trying to on each slide, because like show off the page. <laughs> so, let's just that 
One of the main ways to share your tips before this was word of mouth. So we thought, like, all you see is the odd post on Facebook or Instagram. So we thought, what if there was an online space dedicated to sharing these tips and literally helping yourself have a greener life? With the recent growth of sites like Team Trees, where you pay a pound and then find a tree, or Team Seas, where you pay a pound and then remove a pound of you know, pollution out of the ocean, we decided that we wanted a space where people can find organisations like this and donate to organisations like this, but also help us run this app to ensure that you know, we can continue this legacy of making sure that anyone can communicate with anyone, regardless how close you are, about how you are being greener. As well as this, only two countries in the COP26 summit last year were online with the 1.5 degrees warming target. By creating this app, it's very clear that the action which is needed to bring everyone's you know, emissions down needs to come from the core, needs to come from the bottom. And this is why we created Concept Preserve. As we can see, you know, Morocco and the Gambia are the only ones compatible with a target, whereas any of these other countries behind that line are not. Yeah, there's some which are doing better, the Philippines, India, Ethiopia, but then there's some over here, such as Russia, Ukraine, Turkey, and the US, which are just so far behind it. You know, as um, Stephen was saying, there are only two which are just about to hit it. But if we can try and get, even if it's just one person, to have this app of green life and then move on to the next person, all of these small people will just add up and eventually make some sort of difference. So how did we create a conservative preserve? There's another screen. So both of us, like we said before, had separate roles. So we'll go on to my role first. I planned pretty much every step along with help from Declan. I organised everything, made sure everything was going to plan, making timelines of what we were going to do on this day, what we are going to do tomorrow. I was supervising the app design because Declan's better at app design than I am, <laughs> very simply, but I was just making sure that everything looked right, everything was actually working, and then designing posters, making the presentation, making like the um, Google Forms and questionnaires to get feedback from our peers at college and also from extended family with my kids. So in my case, I was responsible for, as I mentioned before, the UI and the UX design. That ensures that, you know, it looks nice, you know, it's simple to use, and any user, regardless of your accessibility requirements, can use the app. But I was also responsible for making sure it works for users to test it. So we gave it to a group of random students who, you know, signed up and said, hey, try the app. And, you know, if they can't use the app, it probably says a lot, you know. If you, if, you, if you download an app on your phone and you can't use it, then it's not a good app. But most of our users could use it fine, and any other users that couldn't use it fine, we could be amended that to make sure it works and make sure it's very simple. Such as the use of images, you know, you got a homepage, what does that mean? You go to your homepage. Conversations, that's it. It's your chats. But I also assisted in the project planning of our project. So while Shelby here was responsible for most of it, I was the one who basically said, that's going to take a bit longer, that won't take as long, you know, I can do that a bit faster than I can do that, for example. And mostly I was responsible for the development of it front end and also the back end, so the work into it, which, you know, a bit of a learning curve for me, I'm not a developer at heart. So our impact so far, I'll actually see you now. <laughs> Sorry. Like we said before, we, uh, we've made it accessible to the public um, using a waterfall methodology in which we work to review each phase after its completion, just to make sure everything works. Drawing our user testing, we found the following. So, 11 people, so it was 30 people sample, and 11 of us reduced their carbon emissions by 10% or more which isn't much, but it's a start. And then, obviously, 14 of us reduced it by more than 25% or more. Uh, no, more than, less than 25%, that's a typo. And then, this little small portion here, five, 
just reduced it by more than 25%. So as we can see, that number is quite large in the sample. But we can see that more than 50% of our users are decreasing their carbon emissions by more than 10%, with only about 17% reducing it by more than 25 So where would 2,000 pounds go? The Waterline Summit obviously offers 2,000 pounds for winning tea. And since we were able to be finalists, we've had in-depth discussions with, our white, with the environmental group at WIKE, we've been you know, discussing how that 2,000 pounds is actually going to make a difference and how we would use that. So here's some of our ideas. So a tree for every student, so 16,000 students, 2,000 trees. Could be on college on the college site, could be outside of college, either way, a tree is a tree. However, I also found from my research that smart TVs like this one are much more effective than little, you know, projectors. I mean, if we had projected any of today, I would, you know, I'd have ranted about that. <laughs> <laughs> but the TVs are so much more effective in regards to the energy consumption. So that's, but at Wike, we do have smart projectors, unfortunately. So that could be a start for us. You know, finally get rid of all those. And geography actually introduced a ban to water bottles. However, what if we got this ban around the college? So instead of having, you know, 100 plastic water bottles, we have nil. We give every student a reusable water bottle, either a first day of starting away, or just one pound. And that one pound could go to any of the charities, like some frequency agencies and other organisations as well. Yeah, I can do this. Yeah, so I'd like to thank you again for listening and you know taking time for your busy schedules. Obviously, you work with my mum, which is <laughs> uh, it's a bit weird because that's not a line that I like. No, <laughs> Jackie, look her up. Try to shoot her message now. <laughs> uh, but thank you for taking the time for your busy schedules, and now I'd like to open the floor to any questions that you may have. How did you come up with the idea? So the idea actually started because we both use social media a lot, but we both don't see anything about the environment on that. I follow environmental pages, so does Shelby, but it's very rare to see that post because it doesn't you know, get in my algorithm. So we decided, what if there's a social media dedicated to this? If you had more time or more money to put into this specific project, what else would you Include the so far. So one of the biggest features that would include is actually making sure that the logging isn't done by you. It's sorted for you. So like drive detection, for example, apps like Life360, Snapchat, and even Maps, obviously, mm. has drive detection. And that can detect when you're driving, but all you'd have to do on the sign up is input your car model, and it'd instantly find how much like consumption that uses, and then it'd log that for you. But we'd also, like, at the minute, the rollout isn't that big. But we'd love to roll it out to everybody. Sorry, I was going to say, where, where did you get the data from to work out the carbon reduction? The data, we use various online sites. Uh, we've used some of our own research. Uh, do you want to say anything on that? Yeah, we've definitely found all the research for it. I basically put all the numbers together, and I was just like, Oh, this is how many um, phone charges would lead to this amount of um, kilograms of CO2. I think the number was something like 4,282 yeah, phone put charges <laughs> would be equivalent to about 28 kilograms of carbon dioxide. But on that note, um, we actually looked into the app and basically said, a number really doesn't mean much. You know, if I say Shelby is saved 28 kilograms last week, we said, what's that mean? So we decided to actually say, Let's put that in real numbers, you know? Yeah. Let's put that in a number that people are more likely to set up. So like <laughs> phone charges, laptop charges, miles driven. What, what was the feedback like from the students? We had a lot of feedback being like, oh, this, this little feature here didn't work. I've never heard of half of these businesses. Um, are there any more news stories? So we added a few other news stories that there was um, top 100 women in sustainability that we added because of all of like the feminist movements at the minute, like what about feminism and um, the environment? Because that's not talked about a lot. 
Um, we also got through uh, some feedback like, you know, we absolutely love this app, um, and that's where we got the focus group from, of them being like, we really want to know more about this, and can we try it out? Can we see more features? I'd like to have this and stuff, but I don't like this feature. It's just a lot of that. <laughs> I just follow on from that, you know, the group of 30, was it 30 students who did the test? How long did they test for? What was the testing period? It was about a week, so we let them test it because that's how we monitor. So we look at it on a weekly basis, so uh, we monitor carbon emissions of a week. Uh, so we monitor the carbon emissions as, a foot, as like a benchmark for the first week. On the second week, we introduced them to the app and said, let's try this. And then we looked at the reduction. Sample. Uh, obviously, the sample could be bigger. Uh, 30 people isn't representative of anyone. Uh, yeah, you've got a small 30 people sample, but of course, we'd love to have that sample even bigger. Who would you say the app is really aimed at? Um, thinking sort of like you focused, you focused group on students. So obviously, we used our focus group of students just because that's who's accessible to us. However, we aim to have the app aimed at everybody. So people our age, people older, even my granddad's age, because that's why we've made it so usable. That's why we've made it so simple. My granddad's on Facebook, and he can figure that out. So I'm quite sure he can figure that out. Uh, but we'd love to have everyone on board with it, because no change is just gonna happen with one generation, it needs to be everyone. What's been the most challenging part of the project? Uh, yeah, I'll, go to, I'll say what the most challenging part for me is. Uh, if you've got any challenges, feel free to pop in. Uh, but for me, it was learning a lot of the front end and back end. As I said before, I am in no fashion a developer. I'm very much a UI designer. Uh, but I had to do, you know, you have to overcome that challenge and say, how do I actually design an app to make it usable? And then how do I actually make that app work? So we looked at that and said, Okay, I'll learn it. <laughs> you know, using sites like Stack Overflow, um, you know, you've got W3 schools, so, you know, learning a bit about how to actually make an app on the back end and the front end was a bit of a challenge for me. I had a show and was um, definitely trying to explain that all to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, can you dumb it down, please? I've got no idea why this is. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, so we found a gap in the market. I saw like, when we were first being introduced to this that there was, I think it was from Wilberforce College in the East Hall that um, a group of students designed an app which just monitored carbon emissions and not um, like a social media or other features like we did. But apart from that, we haven't really seen anything else. Yeah, to expand on that, like having an app which just monitors your carbon emissions isn't much. So we decided, let's you know go over the top of it. Let's have a chat feature. Let's have daily tips because that's how you you know do better than them. <laughs> and what part of the apps would you say uh, has been the most popular and the most popular? I would think uh, what I've seen the most popular bit in the app is the well, feeds like any social media. People will scroll all the oh the the like yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, people love that bit. Just because like, you know, you can see what your dad did, your friends did, you can see even what your granddad did, as I said earlier, to be a bit more green. Um, but the least popular bits, which we're trying to work on like user engagement for, is definitely like looking at the food and shopping bit. Because obviously our users are quite young. Not many people do uh, shopping at our age. I don't, so <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, but, you know, not many of our age group at the minute does their shopping. So we looked at it and said, how can we make that more engaging to younger groups, but also have it still engaging to older groups? 